Let's read this one. In a study of the accuracy of fast food drive through orders, restaurant A had 298 accurate orders, 50, 59 that were not accurate. So that means um, that one of these values is X, the number of successes, and the other is the number of failures. And I'm not sure which one until the question is posed, because if I'm going to estimate the population proportion of accurate orders, then this will be the successes. If I'm going to estimate the proportion of inaccurate orders, then this would be X. So let's read the problem. Part A, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the percentage of orders that are not accurate. Okay, so that means that 59 is X. And that N is the addition of those two, the total of accurate orders plus 59 orders. All right, so so far I have that I'm trying to estimate the population proportion of not inaccurate orders at restaurant A. And so I'm going to use the 95% confidence level, which means that alpha is 0 0.05. And since confidence intervals are always two-tailed, I know I'm going to have to divide that in half to find my critical value. I also know that x, um, x, not x bar, x is 59 and n is... 293 plus 59. And when I divide those, that will be my p hat, my sample proportion. Okay, so when I add those together, I get 352 total. So that p hat is about 0 0.16761. And now I want to find the margin of error so I can add that and subtract that on my p hat to get an interval. So this is a, this is a single point to estimate the true population proportion. Okay, so p hat is the best point estimate of the true proportion from the population but I want to stretch that out to an interval using 95% confidence. So this 95% confidence, again, we would go looking for the critical value, which would be the z-score with half of alpha to its right. And I can use symmetry in the negative z-score table to find out what that is. Or I can look in the table of commonly used critical values for confidence intervals. And since 95% is one of the most commonly used levels, I'm going to do quick reference on this one because I've shown how to figure out the Z using the Z table in two other videos before this one. So I'm just going to go on um, looking it up in the reference packet. There is, There are a few tables, and um, the one that is for confidence intervals says that this critical value that is associated with a 95% confidence level for confidence intervals is Z alpha half, our critical value, 1.96. So I'm going to use that to calculate my margin of error. According to the reference packet, my margin of error is the critical value times the square root of p hat q hat over n. So I know what p hat is. Well, what is q hat? So I have 0 0.16761 times q hat, which will be 1 minus that. So that is 1 minus 0 0.16761 gives me 0.83239. all divided by my total n of 352. And then I'm going to replace this with my critical value 1.96. So I'm just going to estimate that, calculate it. All right, so all that 
equals about 0 0.039 And my p hat, I'm going to use this before rounding it, add this on, and subtract it to get my lower boundary and my upper boundary. So this is going to be on the left hand side, it's going to be p hat minus 0 0.039 and p hat plus 0 0.039. Okay, so after calculating that, I get from my left hand boundary to three decimal places, I get 0.129 over here. And for the upper boundary, I get 0 0.207. Let's now choose the correct answer below. Since the upper confidence limit of interval for restaurant B is higher than both the lower and upper confidence limits of the interval for restaurant A, this indicates that restaurant B has a significantly higher percentage of orders that are not accurate. Okay, so maybe I need to go back and read up here where it tells us what part B is all about right here. Part B, compare the results from part A to this 95% confidence interval for percentage orders that are not accurate at restaurant B. So we're gonna compare this to restaurant B has a confidence interval like this. Right, so restaurant B there's an interval estimate for inaccurate orders for restaurant B 95% confidence that their population proportion of inaccurate orders is between 0.146 and 0.228. So they're saying our this restaurant, restaurant B, is we're 95% confident that this restaurant has between 14.6% and 22.8% inaccurate orders. And we want to compare that to restaurant A, which has uh, according to this 95% confidence interval between 12.9% and 20.7% inaccurate orders. So comparing them, um, it might be easiest to, to, to understand how they compare by putting them on, on a number line. So if I have a number line from, let's say this is 0.4, 146, 0.146, and this is 0.228. Okay, so that would be the restaurant B. Then uh, restaurant A was 0.129, which is back here, and to 0.207. All right, so they overlap, they overlap a bit right in here. So since they overlap, we could not say that restaurant A and restaurant B have significantly different rates of inaccurate orders. So they might have about the same as what this indicates. So let's figure out which one of these answers um, says that. Okay, so I'll read A again. Since the upper confidence limit of the interval for restaurant B, since the upper confidence level for B is um, higher than both the lower and upper confidence limits, this indicates restaurant B has significantly higher. No, 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 no. The entire, it can't be enough that just the upper limit is greater than the blue region the entire purple region needs to be above the blue region in order for us to conclude that they are significantly different. So this is not the correct answer. B, no conclusion can be made, nah, that's not it. The lower confidence limit of the interval for B is higher, okay, this I can already tell is not right because it's again talking about a single confidence limit and we need the entire interval the entire interval of one to be different than the entire interval of the other to conclude that they're significantly different. 
So D says, since the two confidence intervals overlap, sounds good so far, doesn't it? Neither restaurant appears to have a significantly different percentage of orders that are not accurate. That's it. That's the one.